Hello, and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blog cast. I'm going to do today's show like a robot, apparently. No, I'm not really. Don't worry. Um, today is episode 61. Did I say that? Maybe I did. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to be blogcasting at you, for you, with you, doing all the prepositions with you. <laughs> um, today on the blog cast, we have... Um, a blog that I actually p posted on the blog before I posted the one you've already heard, maybe, if you've heard episode 60. These were reversed in um, publishing and recording time, so um, I don't think that makes any real difference in this case, uh, but for those of you who are keeping track, which is probably no one, <laughs> Bless. If you are, let me know, because maybe I'll be like really more precise about my numbering and ordering of recording and public publication, publication, publicating, publishing is the real word. <laughs> it's not, it's publishing. Um, it's not quite publishing, I feel, if you just push like publish on the blog, but I, that's what they call it. So it's uh, maybe publicating is actually more accurate. Making things public. Publicating is what is happening. It's not actually being published. We are not putting anything on paper, but it's publicated, made public. Um, today's episode is um, a kind of continuation on the Charlottesville stuff. For those of you who heard slash read my previous blog about Charlottesville, you'll remember that I am from Charlottesville. And... Um, Reports from the home front are that it's really a hard, hard time to be there. <laughs> There's a lot of, uh, yeah, and I'm seeing that sort of too via the social media, but just um, conversations with my mom and um, hearing from some people back home. It's, um, that's hard, man. It's hard there. It's hard. It's hard there right now. Um, Especially like now, it's like now that like the town has become the kind of buzzword for white supremacy. Like if you want to just talk about white supremacy, you just say Charlottesville. And um, I'm going to tell you, most Charlottesvillians are pretty not cool <laughs> with that. Um, that's not who who they want to be. Uh, some some maybe there might be a few, but I would be surprised if most of the people of Charlottesville are, are happy with that identification. Um, I know I'm not. Oof, boy, oh boy. Um, anyway, so this is, a, this is a little bit about that, but a little bit more about um, what to do now and how to proceed in this crazy-ass world. Um, so this blog is called Will You Wish You'd Been There? Listen, you guys, I hate going to protests. They're loud and shouty, and there are crowds there, usually big ones, and that's sort of the point. But sometimes I make myself go, despite my natural inertia, you know, that thing that makes it easier not to go than go. And given that there are protests nearly every day now, it can be hard to figure out whether it's a time to hit the streets or a time to take care of myself. My barometer has become, will I wish I'd been there? Here's the thing. When it became clear what was going to happen in Charlottesville on August 12th, people were advised to stay away. From what I understand, the recommendation was that only those with appropriate training and a whole lot of willingness should show up. In general, the Southern Poverty Law Center's advice is to steer clear of assembling hate groups. The Southern Poverty Law Center is a badass organization and has been tracking hate groups for a mighty long time. They've been in the trenches of this a whole lot longer than most of us, so people are usually inclined to heed their advice. And that advice rather conveniently lines up with most people's natural inertia. It is much easier to sheet cake than to risk your life by going where the trouble is. But, but... Many who heeded that advice in Charlottesville now regret that decision. 
despite all the horrible things that happened, I know a lot of people who wish they'd been there. Not to kick ass or knock heads, but to support, to help, to be physically present for vulnerable people. I thought I'd be glad I was 500 miles away when this was set to go down, but now, having endured it at a distance, part of me wishes I'd been there, if for no other reason than to hand medics water and hug people who needed hugs. Simultaneously, I'm glad as hell that no one in my family was, close to, was too close to the fray. It is an incredibly odd sensation to wish vehemently for everyone you know to stay as far away from harm as possible and to somehow wish yourself there. And no one is more surprised about this response than me. I am not a Russian into a fire sort of person. I hate conflict so much, y'all. I can't even watch a heated debate without my heart rate escalating and getting super anxious. I'm a highly sensitive person, HSP with a precarious health situation. I do not really belong at a protest that has the potential to become violent. Given all of that, I thought I would have wanted to be as far away from such things as as possible, but I find I wish I'd been there, been with my friends in the middle of the most dangerous moment in my hometown that I've ever known about. I've heard from a lot of people that they feel the same way. There was that article in the New York Times from the parent who made the decision to steer clear because of their child but now regrets that choice. This is from the article. I now believe we made the wrong choice. Does my status as a parent make me special? It shouldn't. A young man named Dre Harris was ambushed in a parking lot and took dozens of blows by club-wielding thugs. He took them, so I wouldn't have to. Next time, I will stand on the street with my neighbors, even at the risk of injury or death. It's the least I can do to repay those who stood bravely this time. It is always easier to choose not to show up. And those who have been going to these sorts of demonstrations know better than anyone what sorts of risks are involved. That's why why they have to advise you not to go. And everyone has their own acceptable level of risk and their own metric for participation in fighting for good. My metric is clear now. It is, will I wish I'd been there? And most times the answer is no. But when it's yes, it's time to go. On one side is my personal safety, but on the other side is a fight for the greater good. Sometimes it's better to be there. protest you feel like you want to be at or will wish you had been at go to it folks do it i mean there are a lot of articles coming out right about now that are like is is it actually effective are protests useful do they do it do they work blah 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 you know and nobody knows the answer is we don't know but um i think there is some i don't know there's some there is some some sense of like you feel a lot less alone, I think, when you're in a group of people who are all feeling the same kind of willingness to go and speak up. Um, and that feels good. So if you hear of one that you feel like you can join, do it. Um, and also, please go vote. My God. So in New York, uh, we had primaries a few days ago. And, um, listen, there wasn't a lot of exciting stuff on the ballot. So I, 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 that always means that people, um, don't show up, but it was really abysmal this time. Um, 14% of the registered voters, I think voted. It's really, it's bad. And I get it because where, where I live, I had, there were kind of only two positions to vote for. That was a mayor and public advocate and, Um, I was really feeling like I just wanted to vote for the incumbents. And like, when that happens, you're kind of like, well, uh, do I, I, do I, do I really have to go down there and check the boxes? And so like, I understand the, the, like, I, I don't feel excited to go just say like, yes, the status quo, hooray, status quo. But like, I don't know. I, I, I felt so like. Listen, the way things are going, 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to continue to vote. Like, certainly, uh, the right we are watching various rights disappear before our very eyes. And I think, um, you know, activists and people who are vocal about their displeasure with the current administration are likely to be targeted first for voting restrictions, etc. <laughs> so I just sort of feel like, you know what, a lot of people fought really hard to get women to vote, um, to be able to vote, and uh, I better I better do it, even if it feels silly. Um, I don't know. And it felt good, actually. I was like, yeah, I voted. <laughs> I voted because I could. Also, like, Bill de Blasio, you know, I'm not crazy about some of this stuff that's been happening with him, but I do appreciate how vocal he's been about fighting uh, the current administration. So I just felt like a vote for Bill de Blasio was a f vote was a was a fuck you vote to Donald Trump. So so that's what I did. <laughs> I checked the box to say fuck you Donald Trump. That is that's it. Um yeah, so vote if you would please. Uh, uh yeah. Just vote, 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 protest, do all the things. And in that spirit, <laughs> I have pulled out the Billy Bragg because you got to do it. Like, right? It's, now's the time for Billy Bragg. Now, we didn't need him for a little while, but now we, we need him. We need him. We, did, we need him. We need him. We need him bad now. Um, so this song is from his album Workers Playtime. And Workers Playtime was the first album of his that I bought. I have a record somewhere, hopefully. Still have it somewhere, maybe. Um, but yeah, Workers Playtime was, was my first Billy Bragg album. I got the, you know, stuff before later, but this was the, this was my introduction. And I love it. And this song is like, it's not my favorite song, but it, but it, I feel like it's, it's the get out there and, and fight song. It's the protest fight song. So I thought it would be the right one to put here at the end of this particular Blogcast. So this is waiting for the great leap forward. Um, what to tell? Oh, and also, if you can listen to, um, oh yeah, podcast recommendation. Um, okay, this is not going to be a whole podcast recommendation. This is just going to be a specific podcast recommendation that was specifically recommended to me as well, um, which is listen to um, Christopher Lydon's interview with Billy Bragg. Um, it's on his podcast. Christopher Lydon's podcast has a name that I can't remember the name of right now. But if you Google Christopher Lydon, Billy Bragg, you will see it and listen to it. It is open source, I believe, is the name of the podcast. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a really great podcast and um, hearing Billy Bragg talk about the history of, of rock and roll and the history of... Um, something called Skiffle, which I'd never heard of before. It was really inspiring. And just also talking about solidarity and how sort of being with, um, being with people, um, being in solidarity with people can be so me meaningful and, and important. Um, and his own experience with solidarity as a young person. And yeah, so, so that's a specific one to listen to. I don't think you even have to be a fan of Billy Bragg to enjoy it because it's a really interesting um, take on, like, the source of the Beatles. And anyway, listen to that um, and enjoy it. Meanwhile, here is Billy Bragg's Great Leap Forward. Che Guevara Highway Filling up with gasoline Fidel Castro's brother spies A rich lady who's crying All her luxuries, disappointment So he walks over And he's trying to sympathize with her But he thinks that he should warn her That the third world is just around the corner Scientist is blinded 
by the resumption of nuclear testing, and he is reminded that Dr. Robert Oppenheimer's optimism fell at the first hurdle. Someone asking questions and basking in the light of the 15 film filled minutes of the fanzine writer. Mixing pop and politics, he asks me what the use is. I offer him embarrassment and my usual excuses while looking down the corridor, down to where the van is waiting. With the activists or sleeping with the sleepers we are waiting for the great leap forward well one leap forward and two leaps back will politics give me the sack waiting for the great leap forward it's a mighty long way down rock and roll from top of the pops still drawing the door And you can't run from it If you got a blacklist I want to be on it Waiting for your great leap forward If no one seems to understand Start your own revolution And cut out the middleman